can, can you have the children sit down, please? Amen. God bless you guys. Amen. They, they'll, they'll just take over. They'll hang out. Yeah. They're like, I, I'm, I got here to the front. I'm staying. I'm hanging out today. Praise God. God bless you guys. Praise the Lord. Well, we're at Children's Church today. Yeah, faith pleases God. And I want to just share a word with you all. We're going to pray for all the kids and all the, the teachers. Amen. Uh, it's, it's awesome to be in the house of God. Amen. Were you all blessed by that skit? Amen. Praise the Lord. I, I want to share a word that my parents taught me when I was a little kid. It was something that they just naturally taught me. It was something that we, we just began to do. And it wasn't because uh, they sat me down, they preached to me. It was because this was something that I received just seeing the way they lived, the way they talked, the way they acted. It became natural for me to believe God this way. And uh, it, it's entitled, Jesus Help. Everybody shout, Jesus. Yeah. Come on, say it loud, Jesus. Yeah. Now shout, help. help. So it's called Jesus Help because that was the first thing that I learned from my parents. No matter what I go through, no matter how difficult things in my life might be, I knew that I could always cry out to Jesus for help. Amen. And I want to talk to you kids, whether you're a 40-year-old kid, or a five-year-old kid, I want to talk to you all. You say, Pastor, I'm 40 years old. I'm not a kid. Yeah, let me talk to your wife. She'll tell me how kid you are. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> you know, we might get old, but we, we never give up our toys. Praise God. And uh, I just want to talk to you a little bit, this word of Jesus' help. I want to read a scripture to you. If you have your Bibles, I want to read a story in Matthew chapter 14. Matthew chapter 14, verse 25. It says, Now in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a ghost. Have you ever wondered if there's really ghosts? <laughs> and they cried out in, for fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them saying, be of good cheer, it is I, do not be afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. So he said, come, and Peter had come down out of the boat. He walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried out saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, Oh, you a little faith, why did you doubt? And when they had got into the boat, the wind ceased. Now my parents taught me that when I would go through a situation and I didn't know what to do to cry out to Jesus. And I learned as a little kid that when I was scared in my room, because sometimes there's something in the closet. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? Even though my parents told me there's nothing in the closet, but they don't know that when the lights are off, there was something there. When the lights came off, they escaped. But no matter what I was feeling, no matter what I thought, if I ever had, a trouble, had trouble, I could always cry out to Jesus for help. And I would cry out, Jesus, help. And I want to tell you, I, since I've been a little kid and now I'm getting to be a bigger kid, Jesus has always helped me. And I want you to hear this. Jesus will help you too. Amen. Here, Peter, he was walking on the water because Jesus said you can. No man, no, no ordinary person told him they, 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 that he could. His, his friends were not saying, yes, you can, go for it. But he asked the one that really mattered, which was Jesus. And Peter got out of the boat. The Bible says that he walked on water. I can't tell you how many times I went to the beach. And even to this day, every time I go to the beach or go to the pool, I always try to walk on the water. Now, I have never walked on water, but it doesn't stop me from trying. Amen. You know, it doesn't matter if I can't walk on water all the time, but I'm still going to try because one day I'm going to walk on water. 
Amen. And, and Jesus said, go ahead and walk on water. And so Peter, he walked on the water. And as long as he kept his eyes focused on Jesus, as long as he looked at Jesus, he was able to walk on the water. But the Bible says that when he began to look at everything else, when he began to look at the, the wind and the storm and the waves, he began to sink. So it shows me here, it's teaching us that when we have Jesus in our life, we could do the impossible things. There's nothing impossible with God. Amen. I remember when I was a little kid, understanding this thing about trusting God and faith and believing God. You know, I just had simple faith. I had a need and I cried out to Jesus and I cried, Jesus, help. And somehow, some way, he was there to help me. I was playing football. How many, how many of y'all, how many you kids are playing football this year? Any kids playing football this year? We got a couple of folks. Oh, yeah. I was playing football and, you know, as a little kid, you know, I was about five years old and it was my first opportunity to be in, in, in sports. And man, that was everything. All, you know, I wasn't old enough at four. I wasn't old enough at three. I tried to get them to let me play. They wouldn't let me play. But when I turned five, I could play football. So my very first game, I was so excited. I'm ready. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, I was a Dallas Cowboy. I'm telling you, I was, I saw myself in the NFL. Here I am, all five-year-old kid. But to me, I felt like I was... I was the greatest football player getting ready to show my skill off to the world. And I went to, into the game and as I was playing, I got hit and I fell wrong and I broke my leg in the very first game. The coach stopped and everybody gathered around. My parents came out on the field. The game was stopped and I was thinking, the game's not over, I gotta play. But I couldn't stand up. My leg was broken. I didn't know what it meant to be broken. All I knew is there was a big pain there. But I remembered that Jesus helps. And I saw my father, who was a man of God, and I, and I went to my dad. And as I saw him, I said, Dad, pray. See, the only thing that mattered was, it didn't matter if I had a broken leg or not. The only thing that mattered was the game was still on and I wanted to play. That's all. I was so focused. I wanted to play the game. So I said, Dad, pray so, so I could play. And I forced him to pray for me on the field. And he put his hands upon me and he, he spoke over my body to be healed. And after, as soon as he said amen, I jumped up on my feet, went like this to my leg, and ran back into the game. God healed me right then and there. Amen. Tell your neighbor, it takes simple faith. Tell your friend it takes simple faith. See, you just got to believe God. You got to trust that God is there. You got to believe that he will help you when you cry out to him. Amen. Somebody say, Jesus, help. Jesus, help. See, Jesus is inviting you to walk on the water with him. He's inviting you to come and, and do things you've never been able to do. He's inviting you to follow him. That he'll lead you. He'll guide you. He'll be there for you. In your life, you're going to face a lot of things that it seems like you don't have the ability to do it. It seems like you don't have the strength or the know-how to do it. Many people will say, don't do that. You can't do it. Don't you know where you come from? Don't you know who you are? Don't you know that you're only this, this old? And they're always going to tell you what you can and cannot do. But when God is inviting you, when Jesus invited you to walk on water, step out and walk on water. Amen. Don't ever let, let anybody tell you you can't. It doesn't matter what it is. I want you to trust that you can do all things. In Philippians chapter 4 verse 13, it says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Tell your neighbor, you can. Say it again, you can. See, you are able. God is with you. Amen. You are able. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. When you go to school and you go and you go into your class and you, you face a maybe you're trying to learn math and math is maybe has been difficult for you in the past. Remember, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. If you get involved in things, maybe you're maybe you're you're, you're going out and playing sports or maybe you're 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 doing something in, in band or whatever it is. Remember, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Jesus didn't, he's not calling you out just to live. He's not calling you out just to exist. He's calling you out so that you can walk on water. 
And when God is on your side, you'll be able to do great things. You'll be able to do things that, that others will say you can't, but with God, you can. Amen. Tell your neighbor you can in Jesus name. Amen. See, I remember a story about these, these, these flies. Y'all hear, ever hear the story about the, the, the Christian flies? The Christian bugs, there was these Christian bugs that were flying and there was a farm and there was a little, the farmer had just, he had just milked the cow. So he had some, some milk in a bucket and these flies, you know, they like milk. So, you know, they, 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 they flew into the milk and one of them was Christian and the other one was not. The one of them believed in Jesus. The other one, you know, his friend was still trying to witness to him. And they both fell in the milk and they couldn't get out. So the, the, the unchristian fly, he began to, he looked at his friend, he said, okay, we're dying. We're going to drown here in the milk. He said, I'll see you later. And the Christian fly said, no, 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 no. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. He began to cry out, Jesus, help. And he began to speak to his friend. He said, no, Jesus is going to save me. And his friend said, no, I'm going to die. You're going to die too. Just give up. But no, the Christian fly said, no, I can't give up. I'm a child of God. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So even though everybody, even though the other fly just gave up and drowned and died, this one was a Christian and he kept on flapping his wings, flapping his little wings and that milk and you know one hour passed and he would keep on confessing God will not see I will not die but I shall live and declare the glory of God he kept on speaking scripture I could do all things through Christ straighten me just flapping his wings one hour goes by he's still he gets tired he's he's thinking the devil's telling him just quit just die just go and you're gonna drown you can't get out he said no I will get out I will live I will not die here and he kept on trying he kept on flapping he kept on moving his wings two hours goes by he still confessed the word Jesus you are my savior Jesus help I will be able to do I can do all things I'm not going to die I will live he kept on crying out three hours four hours even when he's tired he pushed himself beyond the limit and you know what happened that milk turned into butter and it got hard he pulled himself up and he flew away amen. amen tell your neighbor never give up <laughs> amen don't give up your milk is gonna turn into butter in jesus name amen so we never give up we try because that's who we are we keep on pressing through even when others might give up now i don't know about you but me, me being a, a parent, I've had my, my children that sometimes said they wanted to do things. And then when it got a little difficult, they said they don't want to do it anymore. We have collection of musical instruments that have never been played in my house. Sports gear that has been used once. But I want to encourage you, if you are focused and you want to do something... Don't give up when it gets a little tough. God is with you. Amen. And as long as Jesus is with you, everything's going to be all right. You can do all things. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, I want to give this one last scripture. I want to pray with you today. And I know many of you are starting school tomorrow. And I want to pray over you. And I believe in Jesus' name, this is going to be the greatest year for you. You're going to be successful in Jesus' name. See, when God calls you, when you're a child of God, you're not allowed to quit. We don't quit. Amen. Especially when God, God is, is the one leading you. There was this one man and I thank him because, you know, him and the wisdom of God is the reason why we can see each other today. His name was Thomas Edison. He was the one that invented the light bulb. And he had tried and tried and tried to, on creating this light bulb, but he could never achieve it. He had tried over 9,000 times and failed over 9,000 times. 
A reporter came to him and said, why don't you just give up on this idea? Aren't you a failure? You've tried 9,000 times and haven't been able to do it. Thomas Edison looked at the reporter and said, I have just discovered 9,000 ways not to do it. And he kept on. He even tried over 10,000 times. But how many thank God that we have light in this room today? Amen. Amen. Tell your neighbor, don't give up. In 1 Corinthians, I want everyone to hear this word, especially you students. Because this, how many of you want to know how to pass the test? How to have good grades, how to succeed in your class? Well, in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16, it says, For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Tell your neighbor, I have the mind of Christ. Say it again, I have the mind of Christ. You have the mind of Christ. In other words, you might, you might not be able to understand everything in your own power, but I want you to begin to confess that you have the mind of Christ. How many know that Jesus knows how to pass the fourth grade? Jesus knows how to pass the fifth grade. He knows how to pass the sixth grade, amen? And where, where sometimes our mind doesn't work the way it should, where we don't receive everything or we don't understand everything, when you begin to speak that you have the mind of Christ, you're gonna see that, that your understanding is gonna be opened up to you. You're gonna be able to understand things that seemed to be difficult yesterday. I remember when I started confessing the scripture over my, my, my life, I was already uh, an adult and I was, I was, uh, trying to learn something new and I had this teacher that was that was working with me and I began to confess that I had the mind of Christ and as I began to learn what he was trying to teach me in a very short period of time not only did I learn what they were trying to teach me but I actually outlearned him I began to teach him the things that he was supposed to teach me I became an expert at what he was trying to teach me See, when you have the mind of Christ, God will take you to levels that you've never been before. He will help you in ways that you can never even imagine. He'll teach you how to do math. He'll teach you how to do calculus. He'll teach you how to do all those things that the school's trying to teach you to get you to understand. He will open up your understanding and you'll be able to understand it. You'll be able to apply it to your life and you're going to make good grades in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Say, I have the mind of Christ. Christ. Say it again. I have the mind of Christ. Put your hand upon your head like this and say, I have the mind of Christ. Amen. My friends, I want to just tell you, you are not by yourself. When you are alone and it feels like there's no one with you, remember you have a friend that sticks closer than a brother. His name is Jesus. He loves you. It doesn't matter if you're in school or in your home, in the playground. Whenever you are in need, remember that Jesus is there for you. Just cry out to Jesus. Say, Jesus, help. Come on, everybody scream it out. Jesus, help. And just cry out to Jesus and he'll be there for you. Amen. He will answer with power. Praise God. Y'all receive that today? Put your hands together. Give God praise. I want to pray for all the students. I want all the kiddos, whether you're an adult or a child, I want you all to come on up here. We're going to pray for you. I'm telling you, this year is going to be the greatest year for you and your school in Jesus' name. You're going to make great grades. Every one of you are going to do well in the name of Jesus. And your parents are going to reward you for making good grades. Parents, you better get your, you better get your pennies out. You better get ready to honor these kids as they as they grow amen come close come close everybody there's room over here there's room over here praise god amen it doesn't matter if you're in elementary it doesn't matter if you're in college it doesn't matter whatever you're learning we're gonna pray for you this is gonna be a good year for you in jesus name amen parents church i want everybody just to rise up on your feet as we lift up these children before god Hallelujah. I want to tell you, guys, I love you. I love you all very much. And Jesus loves you very much. Someone says, well, how, how, how much does Jesus love me? You know, God, he, 
He loves you so much. The Bible says he even put numbers on the number of hair that are on your head. If one of your hairs fell off your head, he would tell you that's 5,654 hair. He doesn't just know how many hairs, but he even put a number to it. And he cares for you. The Bible says he's an ever-present help in your time of need. And I don't care how difficult some of the things you go through might be. Just cry out to Jesus. He'll be there with, for you. He'll teach you how to walk on water, do things that seem to be impossible. You can. It's our prayer that this year be one of the greatest years of your life. You can make better grades than you ever made before. The Bible says that, he, that you are the head and not the tail. Above and not beneath. And my prayer for you this year that you will succeed in everything that you do, in everything that you touch. That you will finish strong. It might get tough sometimes. It might, you might wonder, how am I going to pass this test? But God will give you strength. He'll give you wisdom. He'll give you knowledge. As long as Jesus is there, don't be afraid. Sometimes you, you're going to feel like you're walking on the water. As long as Jesus is with you, just enjoy walking on the water. How many of you want to walk on the water one of these days? Praise God. So we're going to pray today, and we're going to believe God that your, your, your mind is going to open up to great understanding, that God will be your help. And every time you see a pool, every time you go to the beach, I want you to remember that with Jesus, you can walk on the water. Amen. Just go ahead and close your eyes. If you can, lift up your hands to heaven. We're going to pray over you guys. Thank you, Jesus. Lord Jesus, these are my friends. Part of the family of God. And Lord, they're going back to school. And we trust you, Lord, that you will take care of them, that you will help them you will protect them and you will guide them. Holy Spirit, we know you're with them. We ask you, Holy Ghost, to teach them. You are the great teacher. That no matter what they go through, no matter where they go, they will never forget that you are with them. So Lord, we ask you to bless them. Father, I pray over the parents, Lord, that you will provide for them, that they'll be able to provide for their family, that their kids will not have any need left unmet. And Lord, we pray for peace to be in their homes. Lord, only you can do this for us. You are our comforter, you are our strength. We bless your children right now. We confess that they have the mind of Christ. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God. Put your hands together. Say, I'm ready for school. Say, I'm ready for school. Amen. So when you get to school, you just walk through that door, just go kick it. I'm ready for this thing. You're going to have success in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. God bless you guys. I love you all. I love you all. Praise the Lord. Y'all may, may go back to your seats. God bless you guys. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Somebody say, Jesus help. Praise God. Well, we're going to pray and dismiss. Everybody stand up on your feet. Were you all, did you all have a good time being at Children's Church today? Yeah. Next week, we are going to pray for the sick. It's also going to be Communion Sunday. I encourage you, if you know anyone who is sick, bring them. Bring them to the house of God. You know, there was this one group of friends that they chose to believe that Jesus can heal. And Jesus was in a, in a, in a house and the place was packed with people. But their friend, he, was, he, he couldn't walk. And they couldn't get him into the house because there's no room. 
But you know, these friends didn't say, oh, we'll just come back. We'll, we'll wait for the next meeting. No, they did whatever it took to get their friend healed. The Bible says that they climbed up on the roof, broke the, the roof open, and lowered their friend to where Jesus was. Jesus saw him and said, son, your sins are forgiven. And he also said, rise up and take your bed and walk. He received healing and he received salvation right then and there. Do whatever it takes to get your friends here. Amen. Whatever it takes, bring them to the house of God. We're believing God for healing in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Lift up your hands to heaven. Father, I thank you. I thank you for your goodness and your mercy. I thank you for a wonderful time being with my friends. Lord, I thank you for a great year that they will have. Father, I just pray that the Greyhounds win all their games. I pray for success in everything that your people do, Father God. Bless their hands, Father God. Lord, I thank you that we can enjoy your presence wherever we're at. Lord, for the, the students, Lord, let them find your presence even in their schools. Lord, strengthen them. Help them in their time of need. Father, if there's anyone that's here today that does not know you, let them ask you to come into their heart today so that they could be a child of God. We thank you, Father God, and we love you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Praise God. My friends, I love you all so much. I pray you have a wonderful week. If anyone needs prayer or like to talk, I'll be here in the front. Guys, thank you all for coming to church. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. God bless.